All right, let's go live on Learn Clarinet Online. I've never done this before on YouTube, but here we are today. I've done it a few times on Facebook and it was quite a lot of fun. I get to talk about my opinions and my life and uh, the interesting stuff that has come up in lessons. Today isn't going to be so much about discussing students and the crazy things they get up to and the funny questions they ask in my regular work week. Rather, today is going to be about me learning to play a new instrument I just acquired. You see, I recently turned 32 years old and I currently live in Turkey. I have lived here for about a year and a half now, maybe a little bit, a bit less, about a year and a half. Um, beautiful country and amazing clarinet culture in Turkey, I have to say. I was thinking about starting a YouTube channel called Yabanja Klarnet, which is foreigner clarinet in Turkish. And yeah, it would be funny. Um, it's cool. I have a bit of a head start, as you might imagine, having been a professional clarinetist before. The Turkish clarinet is a completely different animal. <clears throat> but let's talk about what we're going to get up to today. So I'll jump into my software here. Hopefully everything is working out. So basically today I'm going to do... Uh, reenact the unboxing because I do think it was a pretty hilarious unboxing I have to say just a bit of backstory this clarinet was bought off Turkish Amazon uh, called Trendyol it's kind of like Amazon but a bit more it's kind of like a cross between Amazon and Wish <laughs> let's say not too many um, uh, catastrophes so far with orders although I think one thing took six months to not deliver then got refunded but in general these are just uh, Chinese made clarinets almost certainly um, Chinese made is my best guess, uh, but extremely inexpensive. This clarinet is a long boy. It's a G clarinet, so it's a full tone longer. <laughs> Funny mixing of measurements there. It's one tone longer than an A clarinet. So you can kind of imagine that. Maybe it's five centimeters longer, perhaps a little bit less. Uh, I don't know, two inches for you Americans and you North Americans out there. <clears throat> That's a good question. Does Canada use centimetres? I do not know if Canada uses inches and feet or centimetres and metres. That is a bit of ignorance that I have, even though I used to live in America. They definitely use centimetres here in Turkey and in my home country of Australia. So basically, we're going to unbox the boy. We're going to unbox right here. You know, I'm going to reenact the, the experience of unboxing this very exciting birthday present. It did arrive on my birthday. That was quite, quite fantastic, I must say. We're going to review it so we're going to look at it and criticize it and um yeah point out its strengths and things that are a little bit, bit interesting about it but keep in mind the thing was 120 dollars, and honestly i'm so amazed at how good it is for 120 dollars that i want to be sponsored by this company in the future so i'm not going to be too critical full full disclosure I'm going to compare it to a regular French B-flat clarinet like mine here, in both in tone and in key work and in how it is to play. Um, and then I'm going to learn to play it. I mean, I've played it a little bit already. I'm not going to pretend it's the first time I've played it, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to play some music. I'm going to go through the procedures that I would, you know, um, recommend a student go down in order to get their fingers around a new instrument Basically, I am a bit of an Albert system beginner. I'm a beginner as far as playing Albert system clarinets go. Uh, if you, if that's a foreign term to you, this is a Bohm system clarinet with its um, how many rings we got here? Five, five, six rings. Sorry, six ring, not full Bohm was seven. Six rings, seventeen keys for me, or eighteen keys because I have the auxiliary E flat, even though I haven't used it in about two years. <clears throat> so yeah, the six rings. 18 key or 17 key instrument Albert system I don't know the exact numbers but let's say it's got a lot less <laughs> it doesn't have as many keys and definitely doesn't have as many rings and it's a little funny to play around and maybe I'll talk a little bit about the um in comparison to B flat clarinet I think that it's worth people uh, have a bit of an idea of the difference between the mouthpieces they look very similar but I'm going to say the Turkish mouthpiece as not double the tip opening of a B flat mouthpiece I think my Van Doren B40 is 1.1 millimeters tip opening. I'm going to say this is a 1.6 or 1.65 uh, millimeter tip opening. It is huge and it came with a singular reed. And I'm going to say that reed is about a 0.75 strength, not a 1, not a 1.5. I'm going to say it's a 0.75 strength reed. That guy is soft and I only have one of them. I tried to fashion one with a, I tried to make one with a, um, 
with a scalpel because you can't really not, not much point sanding a three and a half and turning it into a 0.75 really hacked away with the scalpel tone was great it was just very soft so i don't know enough about read adjustment i guess to turn a 3.5 into a 0.75 i think you need a i don't know a wood chipper or something to do that so and then i'm going to perform on it so i've lined up a few pieces of music here are some of the accompaniments you're going to be hearing something like this some little beautiful melodies like this something a bit more upbeat as well and something with some dodgy programmed drums and uh i think this is a turkish pop song from memory and this one is the last one I'm going to play, number five, and it has some very tricky scales in it. So we'll see if I can make it all the way to this fifth work without, uh, you know, committing so many musical atrocities that my uh, viewers run down to zero and YouTube demonetizes and deletes my channel for desecrating Turkish music so badly. That's actually one thing I'd like to avoid today is playing Turkish clarinet in public so badly that I get the whole country on my wrong side and they revoke my residency and, you know, turf me over to Georgia or Bulgaria or something. I quite love living in, I quite love living in Turkey. I would like not to get kicked out. If you're listening to me, um, Turkish government, please uh, approve my residency and let me stay in this beautiful country. All right, where's my software here? So we're going to perform on it and then I'm going to wrap up. If there's a comment, which I highly doubt because this is a bit of a surprise live stream, if there are comments, I will try to respond to them. In fact, I will respond to them at the end. In order to stop the live stream, I have to go into the studio and if there's a comment there, I won't miss it, let's say. All right, let's get rid of that plan there. And let's reenact this um, hilarious unboxing experience. Let's look at this guy here. <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of my mouse because I do have another scene lined up here. So here we go. Here's my table. This is my desk here. And this is the box that my clarinet came in. You can see it in my little small circle screen there. But this is what we've got to work with from Aras, Aras Cargo. Cargo, the man who delivered it. I've met him a lot of times. All right. So here it is. Let's take it out of its box. All right. Ugh. So you flip the lid open here. And you are greeted not with a case necessarily. And I wouldn't call it a soft case either i would call it more like a bag i would say it's more like a soft flute case and it's funny when it arrived it was so light i was a bit amazed really it was so light i thought maybe this isn't the clarinet maybe i ordered something else that i forgot about i'm gonna jump back to this scene here this is the size this is what we're dealing with here it's like a little pouch in fact it is very reminiscent in size and dimensions to a flute case so perhaps it is actually a flute case and the the people who manufactured it just um, um i don't know i hust pearl flutes for ten thousand of these cases and yeah this is what it looks like very squishy there's absolutely nothing hard about it this case but then again i really can't complain this thing was 120 dollars, and the thing works perfectly all the pads seal and it's actually quite fun to play all right let's jump back into the uh table view Here's our table view here. Let's uh, unzip this guy. All right, doing this one-handed while I hold the microphone um, TikTok style, as all the kids do nowadays. All right, so that's what you're greeted with when you open the case. When I opened it for the first time, it looked exactly like this, except everything was in plastic. Uh, I kept these because they're hilarious, because these are um, sort of these things that come with Chinese manufactured stuff, like smartphone components and things. Very, very, very small uh, glove. And in sufficiently sized glove for me i think that's about where my fingers stop is right about there so don't need those i can throw them out now i kept them just for this video don't need them anymore it came with cork grease i was very thankful for this cork grease i must say because i only brought one one tube of cork grease from australia to turkey and i had run out several months ago and then you buy a new clarinet you get some cork grease not bad at all it comes with a perfectly serviceable uh pull through or swab I noticed um, very few people call it swab. I feel like I'm alone in this world in calling a clarinet pull through a swab. I don't know. I just have a thing for monosyllables, if you can. This is a funny bell. It actually does have uh, a slight difference to a French bell or any bell that I've used before. And that's at this, um, the bottom. Yeah, like look at the bell ring there. There's actually quite a lot of plastic, quite a lot of black plastic that... Um, increases the length of the instrument so the bell ring actually sits quite high up and then there's a lot of um, extra material down here which i find 
a little comical. So yeah, that's the bell. So what have we gone through so far? We've gone through the swab, we've done the swab, we've done the cork grease, we've done the bell. And then it came, this is exactly how it came. The mouthpiece came exactly like this. I've never seen this before. With the reed attached. Isn't that absolutely adorable and charming? And yeah, like I said, it's an extremely soft reed, but it's pretty funny that it came, <laughs> came attached to the mouthpiece, I think. Here's our top joint, um, kind of like you would expect a top joint to be but just a little bit longer, let's say. It's a long, it's a long boy, especially um, between the A key and the top of the tenon. That's like a long distance. It's a longer distance. It kind of looks a bit, looks a bit funny. It's much the same with B flat and A, where I feel like the most characteristic difference if you were to sight pick a key of an instrument is just that distance between the A key and the um, end of the top joint. Uh, it's considerably longer on an A clarinet. I feel like it's the most obvious differentiating visible difference between an A and a B flat clarinet and obviously even more so the case with a G clarinet. Here we go, we've got the bottom joint here. Probably not too surprised. You're missing a ring there. We're missing one ring here. Uh, yeah, that should be a ring there, but there isn't on an Albert system clarinet. So that actually produces an F sharp when you play this note here. It doesn't produce an B flat or a B natural, it produces an F sharp, uh, sorry, it doesn't produce a B flat or a F, it makes an F sharp or a B natural, which is pretty funny. And then what do we have? We've got the, we've got the barrel. Not much to say about a barrel. It's a little bit long. <laughs> it's longer than you'd expect. All right, let's jump into the um, normal view now that the, um, oh, the last thing I came with was a little perfectly serviceable jeweler screwdriver, which is um, very considerate considering most instruments like this that come in a squishy case. Could use a bit of adjustment or tightening. All right, see you later, packaging. Don't need you anymore. Let's put this guy together. I'm going to put the microphone down and I'm going to put the clarinet together and it should only take a minute or two. There he is, there's the G clarinet, what a beast. Let's put it, um, I'll put it right in front of my laptop here and I'll put my B flat right in front of my laptop as well. You can kind of see it is not exactly a straight alto clarinet or anything, but <laughs> it's pretty long. Um, I wish I could kind of demonstrate, yeah, I'll do this. That is the difference in length. So it's almost a mouthpiece. Yeah, it's a bit more than a mouthpiece longer in length. It's almost a full mouthpiece longer. Now, let's talk a little bit about this um, funky key work we have here. I know most people just want to hear how it sounds. In fact, let's just do that. I'll play a scale on it just to get it, just to clear the air. People want to hear how it sounds. Just imagine what an extremely open tip opening mouthpiece is with an extremely soft reed on a really long cheap clarinet. You should be able to imagine the sound. One thing with Albert fingering that just takes me so long to get used to is the whole F natural is played um, like this with your middle finger down. And that is, um, yeah, I'm pretty old and rewiring my brain in that way. It's going to take a while. And not only do you play it that way, it's basically an F sharp anyway. You have to lip it down so far. And I looked up the woodwindfingerings.org um, Albert system clarinet fingering chart, hoping to find an answer to how to play the F and C 
with your left middle finger and left thumb and it not be terribly sharp. And Woodwind Fingering, woodwindfingerings.org helpfully said uh, it's the pitch is high. It said it's high and it gave me no hope. And that's very depressing because usually you have about 20 options with woodwindfingerings.org gives you a lot of options usually. Maybe I'll find one. In fact, let's... Uh... I mean, I suppose that's the benefit of having a massive tip opening and a very soft read is you can bend that pitch around like a trombone. You know, I can't complain. I know <clears throat> they have a good life, don't they, these tromboners? Now, what did I promise I was going to do? What have I done already in this lesson? I've done the unboxing. I'm going to review the instrument. Let's have a bit of a look at this guy. Maybe I'll see if I can do a bit of a zoom in and see if we can uh, check out some details on this guy. So it has the funky wraparound, um, wraparound register key, which is, I don't know, I like it. I like wraparound register key. I'm not a... Man, this uh, expensive DSLR really wants to focus on my face, not the instrument. Yeah, so now it's in focus. You got a bit of an idea now. Um, let's go from top to bottom. So hopefully my face won't auto-focus the instrument too much. So starting with the mouthpiece, amazing. For $120, the whole instrument was $120. This mouthpiece is incredible. It sounds fine. <laughs> uh, it doesn't, it's not squeaky. The rails are even, um, the table is quite flat. In fact, it just looks fine. I mean, I know it's not hard rubber. It's definitely plastic. Um, yeah, I really have no complaints about the mouthpiece. I thought it was not going to sound characteristically Turkish, but it sounds, it sounds kind of great. I'm really happy with it. The ligature is hilarious. It's very much bent. It's sort of um, the screws are slanted on an angle this way on the way down and that's just kind of funny but completely harmless i'm not a big ligature a believer in ligatures making much difference other than if they don't hold the reed on properly barrel not much to say it would be nice if it was stamped with the length so i'd just be able to quickly change um buy another barrel one day but that's unlikely i'm not going to become a turkish clarinetist i don't believe that's the thumb hole there um just com comically missing a ring it's quite a funny feeling to play a clarinet without a ring on your left thumb. And the register key, beautifully placed, very easy to play. They've used tons of key cork on this. So they've obviously spent a lot of time actually building up material underneath all of the keys to make them open and close pretty uh, accurately and with enough distance from the tone holes to make it more or less in tune. Amazingly, fairly in tune. Uh, let's spin this guy around. What else do we have here? Um, yeah, the front of the clarinet, not much to talk about. I have no idea what metal these keys are made out of, but it's very soft and very easy to bend, which is good for me. Check out that articulated G sharp so you can trill to um, G sharp with your right index finger. Isn't that just... That's not something you see every day. And, you know, I don't actually know why it's not on B flat clarinets, actually. Why not? I suppose it'll be a bit of a fuss. Yeah, it wouldn't be that easy to squeeze another key in there. There's probably a good reason why it's not done. But, yeah, bring it on. Maybe it's not even called, I don't even know if that's the correct term, articulated G-sharp. Let's just call it right-handed G-sharp for now. I don't want to sound like, I don't want to make anything up. I'm not a clarinet manufacturer. No ring on the top index finger here. Two rings down here. And like I said, in order to play, this makes doesn't make a B-flat or an F. It makes a B-natural or an F-sharp. So in order to play an F-natural... You have to play an A and then with your ring finger, you touch this key. And this key doesn't do um, B natural. This does F natural or um, B flat, which is uh, hilarious. So that means to play Mozart, to go, um, <laughs> let's say, wait, how's G, E, and you'll need to do this to get to the F sharp. And then in order to get into the D, you have to slide with your ring finger like this. A funny world. And in general, your right hand is spreading out a lot. I have a pretty big guy with big hands and my hands are really, yeah, they're kind of maxed out here. In fact, when I stretch out my pinky down here, my left, my right arm index finger touches the E flat key and almost depresses it. So if I had much smaller hands, this would be pretty tricky. And it might actually explain, I think, why um, clarinet in Turkey is pretty much considered to be a man's instrument. It's a very much a machismo masculine thing to do to play clarinet. 
And that could just be for practical reasons because men have bigger hands and man, you don't want to have smaller than average hands when you're playing a clarinet this long. Look at the spread. That's a big spread down there. And most Turkish clarinet players do um, end up having what would a conservatorium clarinetist look like? Terrible hand technique, but you got to do what you got to do when you got a clarinet this long. Uh, slightly busy logo. Can't say I'm a huge fan of the logo. I like a nice, clean, simple logo, but what are you going to do? A big floral one isn't so bad. Let's see if I've scared off everyone from this stream. No, oh, still got three current viewers. Thank you for joining in, people. It's been a funny old journey so far. And uh, so far we've unboxed the clarinet. Feel free to kick back into the, uh, the video. Go back a bit to watch the unboxing. It was short and sweet, but... Unboxings are satisfying. I've I just basically wrapped up the review of the clarinet. Another beautiful thing it came with was this little thumb saddle thing that Tom Ridenow used to sell. I don't know if he still does, a million years ago. But yeah, the thumb rest is um, uncomfortable without the rubber saddle that it comes with. So yeah, I slapped that thing on straight away and yeah, it makes your life a lot better. Uh, this key here looks like an auxiliary E flat, A flat lever. It is not. It's just another F. Wait, what is it? It's another... Wait, it is. Sorry, it is an auxiliary E flat, A flat. So it's hilarious. So on your left hand, you've only got... Um, you've only got three keys and one of them doubles up. Doubles up with the E flat. So it does uh, E flat, A flat in your left hand as well. Just like a professional model clarinet, but it's on a $120 trendy old Turkish Amazon clarinet. I won't play it a bit more. So I can just sort of... Maybe I'll play a big chromatic scale for you all so you can have a look at the fingerings. From the bottom to C. I don't really think my read can play much higher than C. That's another thing. In order to play left hand F sharp, you have to keep your right hand F natural key down. You can't lift it up. So that's a bit of a difference. The fact also that there isn't a right hand F sharp. So yeah, just letting you know. Like I said, I'm still learning to play this thing in tune. Sorry for that epic flatty. But yeah, the, uh, when you try to play that F with your left thumb and left middle finger, man, that pitch is high. And you are thankful you have the world's biggest tip opening mouthpiece because you can lift down a long way on this guy. And then as far as the third register goes, I haven't really gone up there. I know um, Turkish player players do go pretty high, but yeah, I think my 0.75 read just uh, doesn't really want to vibrate at that frequency. It's much more happy down in the... Incidentally, with a reed this soft and mouthpiece this big, double tonguing is quite easy, and flutter tonguing is pretty, um, pretty um, aggressive as well. Like my flutter tonguing doesn't sound like that on B flat clarinet. Let's take a bit, a bit of a comparison to the B flat while we're here.
So I really, um, another prerequisite of uh, playing Turkish clarinet is to absolutely drown the thing in reverb. And I realized it sounds kind of characteristic on Turkish clarinet. It sounds a bit ridiculous on B-flat clarinet. So apologies to that for everyone, but I don't have a producer. I'm here um, juggling a couple of programs at once. So what else did I promise? I promised to review it. Let me just have another look over here because I do want to maybe clip this up and say, like make turn into a video of reviewing. So some amazing, amazing details, which I'm just absolutely astonished by is this claret has definitely been gone over by somebody who knows how to uh, uh, <laughs> uh, roughly, let's say roughly adjust an instrument. So this little linkage mechanism down here that makes the low E, clearly it has been bent uh, laterally to work well. I mean, it's a pretty complicated mechanism, really, this low E, if you look at it. I mean, it's more complicated than a B-flat clarinet where you push it down, it uh, lifts up something that puts something else down. So it's a bit complicated, it's got a bit going going on with it. And yeah, every pad on this clarinet just seals absolutely beautifully. And there's even little adjustment screws here for when, like just on a buffet prestige bass clarinet, it's covered in adjustment screws. Um, this clarinet is covered in adjustment screws for when, you know, key corks compress and and pads settle and everything, you'll be able to turn one of these screws a quarter turn and you will be fine. You won't need to um, service your instrument. I don't think many people who buy this instrument necessarily know uh, much about clarinet in general, but yeah. Um, also just check out some of this. I don't know if this is going to focus, but some of this, um, some of this key cork, because key cork isn't the cheapest material in the world. You can see that a lot of key cork, a lot of layers of key cork have been used to make these keys not collide with each other. So the top um, trill key here doesn't collide with the, the second to top trill key, or the middle one in this case, there are only three, pretty much because someone has glued and built up about six layers of key cork underneath here to ensure that no collisions occur. And there's tons of key cork, like look how thick that guy is. I mean, I don't even own key cork that thick and it's yeah, last time I bought key cork from Music Medical was quite expensive. Another funny thing about Albert system clarinets, if you didn't know, is that the A key here doesn't actually actuate the, um, the G sharp key. So the A key moves completely independently of the G sharp key, which I like. I saw a review of this instrument on YouTube that said that was a setup, a setting up failure on the part of, uh, what is this company called, Granada or something, clarinets. But yeah, your A key doesn't actually lift up the G-sharp key. I mean, I say that, I play pretty out of tune when I played those notes before, so maybe it should, but I don't think it does. All right, <clears throat> thank you for putting up with all my Zoom and all my, I need a cameraman. <laughs> uh, I've compared it to B-flat. I'm going to learn how to play it now. So what I would end up doing for my students usually when they are having trouble um, let's say they're having trouble moving their fingers in a certain sequence of movements, is I'll ask them to apply a dotted rhythm to it, starting long short and starting short long. So, and the, there's a rationale behind that. If you've ever heard a clarinet player who knows who has good technique, you'll hear them play what sound like impossibly fast scales. And it is more or less just a... a neuroscientific trick let's say like it is muscle memory and it is just a sequence they're not playing 56 notes in one bar uh, one at a time they're executing a large sort of sweep and you can apply the technical iron to your secret like little shirt iron like this is a very wrinkly linen shirt here imagine you ironing it out and you iron it out with practice techniques you iron out your clarinet playing with practice techniques and one of them is the dotted rhythm. So let's, um, what's something that I've had to play recently? Let's say you're playing the opening of the Poulenc Sonata and you're not playing your um, semi-quavers evenly and it sounds dodgy. playing them and you're just not satisfied with the so this is a very bad read apologies for playing this in public uh, i suppose that's practice though you play bad reads in public sometimes um so if you're not happy with the evenness uh my workflow for people and what i teach people to do is to turn that sequences that little sequence of notes it could just be three notes 
or it could be four notes. Could it be a very, very short sequence of notes? Take it, add either add a note or delete a note to make it an, well, always add a note. Add a note to make it into an odd number. And then you can just apply that swing rhythm to it on repeat and you'll even it out really, really quickly. Like this. is a good example because the first five notes are five notes and they all are, they have equal duration. Before you know it, you will have evened out. I mean, you could practice 100 hours of scales and still not be able to play that those particular notes evenly between each other. But if you do that little trick, you should be in business. So I'm going to do that with a few things that I find tricky on this instrument. And one of them is just F major scale it is hard on this clarinet because it is so different to the B flat. So I'm going to play it a few times. I'm going to apply that technique and see if I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to be a scientist about it. So I'm going to play F major straight away. And it might have blips, might have squeaks, it might be perfect, I do not know. But then I'm going to practice that method, that swing method to it. And then I'm going to play it again. And hopefully there's a difference and it proves me right. So it's still quite slow, but I do feel more confident around it already. That could be a function of repetition, but you're just going to have to trust me that I'm not the only one who practices sequences of notes that are hard to execute in order this way. And man, it's like a miracle. It's a good hack. It's a way to cut down. I mean, if you learn this little trick, you might spend 50% fewer hours practicing tricky sequences of notes for the rest of your life. And that's worth it. That's uh, one reason you should get clarinet lessons. Uh, I'm going to perform on it. Let's go. Let's jump straight into performances. I'm not totally sure how I um, sequence these backing tracks, and I do apologize for the low quality of them. They're obviously not going to be pop, pop album quality, but I wanted to practice playing this thing in front of people. I might even get some comments. A Turk might even jump in and say, Liam, uh, my God, you need to do X, Y, or Z, and that will make me happy. So let's give it a go. Let's play some music. That's what people are really here for. Here to watch me practice music in public. Trip over, see what happens. <clears throat> All right, the first one. I have it labeled PDF1. I wish I could remember the name of the piece of music. I think it's called like Uskara Giden Gideriken. Gider is a verb to go. I don't know the rest of those words though. Probably proper nouns though.
Oh, yeah, quite quite repetitive, that melody. I think it's a beautiful melody, though. I did notice halfway through that in my read, another, another um, hazard of playing such an incredibly soft read is that that guy dries out so fast. I mean, I was only playing it a few seconds ago. It already feels like a piece of cigarette paper. I mean, it has about a similar tensile strength to a piece of cigarette paper as well, this read. So yeah, it was quite dry. And I think I had the reed moved down a little bit too low on the mouthpiece. So I've reset it. I've put it a little bit higher, higher up on the mouthpiece to sort of um, imitate, let's say, a little bit of uh, more of a harder, harder feeling reed to play. I actually wouldn't mind giving that another go, but this time with a different uh, a reed that has a little bit of moisture in it, not um, zero like the last one did and moved a little bit higher up the mouthpiece. I'd be very curious to see if anyone's had a, <laughs> had a comment. No, no one cares. No one cares about my clarinet playing, and I don't blame you. Um, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. I more just wanted to show everyone how I would go about um, learning to play, learning to play a brand new instrument. So we've already gone over the, how to technically get your fingers around it, how to uh, play for you. I mean, on, honestly, I started with scale because that's just a very efficient way to learn an instrument. Like if you wanted to learn... What on earth is that on weird sound? If you want to learn piano you and you only had five minutes a day to learn piano, just practice five minutes of scales. You'll be uh, doing really well. If you play C major in both hands, you can play an entire melody later, later down the track if you wanted to. Uh, all right, so I'm going to try that again. I'm going to try the same piece of music, but with a different setup. I can skip the metronome count in though. Let's go. So you're just going to have to believe me that I'm not really putting on this Turkish tone. I am playing with vibrato, but more or less that tone is what comes out of the clarinet. When you play a mouthpiece like that and you play an instrument like this, I don't know what is going on with it, but it more or less forces you to play like that. I'm not trying to um, make mockery of Turkish folk music. I'm not trying to uh, put on uh, extremely Turkish performance. That's more or less what comes out of the instrument. And it is beautiful to play. It's so expressive, so... 
it's just so easy to play. I mean, if you have a good sense of pitch and intonation, the thing basically plays itself because it's so flexible. It's very easy to play in tune. Not like a B flat clarinet, not like a French B flat clarinet like this, which is such a precision tool. And in order to get through, in order to play like orchestral excerpts and stuff, you more or less have to, um, you know, you have to be able to play with such uh, precision and reliability and such, it has like a pretty narrow band of things it can do. It has smaller dynamics. Um, it's harder to pitch things up and down on this instrument. I mean, the G clarinet is a lot of fun. It's a good retirement instrument, I have to say. Let's just uh, compare that tone to the B flat again. I won't play it with accompaniment and I don't feel like transposing. I'll start on a B if I want to do and play in B minor. A tricky moving back to B flat. I'm used to having so much room. And I hit the accidentally hit this um F sharp B banana key like six times just then, as I was going back to a small compressed clarinet. I used to earn a full time salary playing E flat clarinet, so it's not a it's not impossible to play these little instruments with big hands. <clears throat> All right, let's move on. Let's play a new piece of music. I feel like I've learned a bit about G clarinet already. Uh, mostly that the reeds dry out very very quickly. And the soft reeds do sound quite a lot better if you shove them up the mouthpiece a little bit higher and simulate a firmer reed, especially when you've got such a, such a thin one. And what else did I learn? I played a few wrong notes. So the classic wrong note I played then was I played a C sharp uh, in the second register without also having down the C key, which you have to have both of them down to make a C sharp, which I'm not used to doing on B flat on normal French bow and clarinets. That's not the case. So I learned something. I learned something by mistake. Let's play another piece of music. What do we have next? We have a PDF2. I think this is called, yeah, Sev Kardeshim. That means love your sibling in Turkish, if you're curious. Sev is the imperative to love. Kardesh is, um, Kardesh is friend. Arkadash is friend. Kardesh is sibling. before I knew it. Man, that was tricky playing all those um those B flats in the bottom register. I might um zoom into my fingers what I had to do to play all of those. What I was playing was this. Check out the hard work you have to do with your um right hand here. sounds kind of klezma which is not surprising um turkey is really where i live in turkey uh, i live in the south coast of turkey it's extremely close to israel and 
I'm Australian and sometimes I forget um, that the rest of the world is actually pretty close together, especially the rest of Europe. Um, it's pretty darn close together and, yeah, you you forget it because in order for me to get from my city in Australia to the other side, to Western Australia, it's like Perth, I would cross the equivalent of like eight countries. I'll go through like Turkey, I'll go th through Turkey to Bulgaria to Slovenia. Before I, I could probably get all the way to London and then... Um, <laughs> That's about the distance, let's say, between where I live and uh, London is about the same distance from my home city to uh, just a further city away, you know, two cities away, Adelaide and Perth. <laughs> I hope I'm not forgetting another city in there. I don't think I am. All right, I'm going to try that again. And, man, that was tricky. That was, uh, that was like an Albert system study, that melody. It's full of left-hand flipping for the F. And intonation, this is the first struggle I've had with intonation because the left-hand F is very, very sharp and then the G above it is quite flat. So wish me luck this time. Apologies, wrong piece of music. A bit more fun that time. That's another cool thing about getting your fingers around an instrument. You start being more confident and you start feeling like you can do more. Um, idiomatic playing, let's say, although basically playing that like Yoro Feedman plays a G clarinet. Someone tell me this. If someone knows in the comments, does Yoro Feedman, the famous klezmo clarinetist, does he play on a C clarinet? Because I edited a video of his a while ago and I couldn't tell if he was just very big or his clarinet was small. Um, yeah, it was tricky, tricky to see. I know that klezmas often played on a C clarinet. Um, but yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it played on a G clarinet. Uh, I call this, this is called in Turkey, they call this, they call this a Turkish clarinet, but it is used a lot in Macedonian and Bulgarian folk music as well. But that just goes back to my point before about it being a fairly small world, um, out there. I just heard the rest of my family come home. So I might treat them to that melody one more time. I feel like I could get a little bit better at playing those transitions and making those open Gs less flat. So... This is basically what I wanted to do with this live stream is just to show people what I do. So I play something that's simple. If I'm trying to learn something, especially a new instrument, I play music that is easy and then I cr then you have brain power and you have bandwidth to criticize your own playing. If you are learning a new instrument and playing something extremely difficult, you won't be able to hear your own. I mean, you might be able to hear that you're generally playing inaccurately, but it'll be really hard for you to figure out exactly how you're playing inaccurately. So that's why I'm choosing difficult music, although this is a little bit too difficult. Um, easy music, although this is pretty tricky. Tricky Old um, Shenai, Shenai. I can never say it's Shenai. It's common for Turkish names to end in A-Y. And I can never remember if it's I or A, like Umay. Um, I think it's Umay or Umay. Umay. Give me another chance. Let's go again.
fun doing some of those like klezmer drop-offs will be kind of fun maybe i'll see if i can incorporate them into the next view i'm feeling a bit better about my open g's now i'm feeling better at automatically adjusting to play the g's sharper and then bringing it down immediately to play the f's lower adapting to the instrument hopefully i don't start doing it on b flat clarinet as well uh, yeah, I find that's another thing, irritating thing. People underestimate how hard it is to be good at playing A, B flat, C, G clarinets, being able to play all these clarinets well. It's very, very, very difficult. I mean, most think about an orchestra. Most people go through their professional life as a bassoonist, probably playing one or two bassoons. Oboists, they go through like eight models of the same oboe, but similar, I think very, very similar. They don't end up playing, and most oboe, the principal oboist doesn't play a you know, an A-flat oboe randomly. That's not something that I would ever do. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's just my, just going from my observations here. But clarinetists, we have to play clarinets. We have to play instruments in different keys with different tuning tendencies, different sort of resistance tendencies across the whole instrument. And yeah, it's quite a quite a cross to bear we have. And yeah, if you wanted to add it to your, add to your pain, get a cheap, to, uh, cheap G clarinet that will... Um, bring you some fun times all right i'm going to get rid of this menu here perform on it then i'm going to wrap up and i doubt there's going to be any comments so it's going to be a quick quick end after these last few performances what is this one here let's see if this one's worth playing what's pdf3 look like is it difficult that is the question it doesn't look difficult but what do i have coming let's have a bit of a poke around i'll tell you what i think when i look at this music what i worry about so we've got starting on uh, what do we have here? We've got starting on E, pretty straightforward, very, very easy melody. Uh, A, E, I mean, this is going to be pretty hard to do, but right here, you've got the Gs followed by an F straight away. So that's going to be really tricky. And not only, not only is the, are those two notes opposite in their tuning tendencies on this instrument, they're close together in this melody. So I'm going to have to go pitch up, pitch down, pitch up, pitch down, and then play the E more or less in the middle. So that's going to be quite a feat of coordination. Wish me luck. But other than that, there's not too much to worry about. Let's... Let's give it a go. Lovely little melody. I think that's actually from TV. It sounds almost familiar. It sounds like a Turkish little melody there. I need to give that another chance. I played so many wrong notes. I'm not used to playing these Albert fingerings. This is another kind of Albert fingering study here where you're lulled into a false sense of security and then you play a bunch of wrong notes because you're not <laughs> you're playing it like a B-flat clarinet. Let's try again. Thank you. 
lovely little melody. I think the Turks write beautiful melodies, I have to say. Now, what was that piece of music I was about to play before that didn't really come out? Oh, my Lord. Yeah, it's all that's all a bit too difficult, I think, for today. I didn't think... <clears throat> I thought I might be able to play it, but I'm going to play one more for you called Ben Melamet. Uh, lots of Turkish eyes, Kendim Girdim. Another, another, <laughs> another title with a verb to go in it. But I don't know the rest of that Turkish. My Turkish is poor. Is that it? This is what I'm looking for. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how this works. Albert Fingering's got me got me so flustered then I completely got lost. But hey, it's a simple melody and simple chords. It sounded okay. Let's have a look at this melody here. It's mostly the problem here is the is the beaming. <laughs> the beaming in bar six is just designed to trip people like me up. Let's have a look at this bar. Again, it starts on that high C, which is a very, very sharp note. Thought I just heard my camera die, but we're still here. I'm going to try it again, but I'm not going to show you the sheet music, so uh, wish me luck. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to be worrying a little bit about pitch this time. And if someone could explain to me that key signature, I get the idea it's like a quarter flat on the E flat. Um, uh, that's kind of beyond me to do, but maybe next live stream I'll figure out how to do quarter flat key signatures like this. It probably has a name. There's sort of a classical music for every culture, if you haven't noticed. Let's go. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, people. I've really enjoyed uh, sharing the old G clarinet with everyone. Um, I'm definitely at the end of this stream. I don't want to go much longer than an hour. I think it's a bit 
you know, for maybe for Twitch, you can go for five hours, six hours. I think for YouTube, an hour is plenty. What have I done? I've done the unbox. I've reviewed the instrument. Honestly, for $120, it is a so much fun. It's the best $120 I've spent in quite a long time. I've compared it to the B-flat clarinet. I've tried to learn to play it. I've performed on it. And I think it's about time. It's time to wrap it up and go home. Let's check YouTube Studio just in case there is a comment. Oh, here we go. We've got some few, few people in here. Nigel Haywood. Piano or violin, which is harder? Interesting question. I would say piano and violin are both extremely difficult instruments, I think, because um, the size of the repertoire. I think that clarinetists and saxophonists and some other instruments have a bit of a slightly slightly easier time in that department. But, man, playing violin, in order to be a professional violinist, a professional classical violinist, I think you just need to have your brain and hands around so much music. And the same with pianists. They have to learn, they have to know so much music to be like a professional pianist. You need, yeah, just hundreds and hundreds of pieces. Whereas a clarinetist, you can get by life maybe knowing 20 of the most famous works like Brahms and Mozart and Weber, um, Schumann, uh, you know, not that many. You don't need to know that many. And some of the legends wrote terrible music for clarinet anyway that no one knows, like Mendelssohn's Sonata for Clarinet. Completely forgettable. No one actually knows it. But yeah, funny question. Piano or violin, violin which is harder? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say uh, both are extremely hard, but violin, they both have so many advantages though because you can start violin so young, you can start piano so young. They both have massive, massive um, repertoires that are difficult, but exciting and fun and ever fresh. There's always a Vinyavsky to learn on violin. There's always another movement of Beethoven sonata you don't know on piano. And when you get tired of piano music on piano, you can always play uh, accompaniment music for other cool ensembles, Francais Sextet, for example. I'm going to say piano is harder. That's my, that's my statement. Piano is harder because I think it's a little bit harder. All right, Nigel Haywood, you actually know the tune. Did tears, I wondered what it reminded me of. Then stroll me, Rava Rasputin, Brony M. Yeah, it's so much like Rava Rasputin, isn't it? The first melody. Um... Playing in different keys is so tricky. I could, I'm so confident. I pick up the clarinet knowing I can play something by ear and then I remember that I can't play G clarinet. But yeah, that is very, very similar to Boney M's of Rava Rasputin, the first thing I played. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. I think this is plenty of time for a live stream. Good first test. I've enjoyed myself. Hope you've enjoyed it too. See you all in the next one.